It was so nice. And it was the greatest time of my life, Mataji. I had the best time ever. Wow, that's wonderful. So uh, were there any Maharaj there that you met? I'm, um, I met Amala Harinam Prabhu and Amala Kirtan Prabhu. There's two great Kirtanyas. And I also met Pran Govinda Prabhu again. So mm -hmm. it was really nice. And they had like a kids camp where you make like cool things. And then, and then um, we got to sit in the Kirtan. It was so nice, Mataji. Wow. I wanted to go to that one. I missed it this year. I heard it's wonderful. It's there's a lot of devotees there, lots of harinam, lots of kirtan going on. That's wonderful that you got to attend. Okay, thank you for sharing. Yes, uh, Bionto, please share. Um, I went to New York. Yeah. What did you do there? Did you go um, to there? I um. Like I stayed there it was um, because my grandparents live in New York and I stayed with them for Thanksgiving and I had like Thanksgiving dinner there. Very nice. Yes, Viraj. Hare Krishna Madhuchi. Um over the break I went to uh the Dilan temple and then I went to Alachua Temple for the festival of the holy name and stayed there for two days. Amazing. Who, all, who else went to the Festival of Holy Names? Lakshya went? Wow. Any realizations you want to share? Well, how do you feel when you see all those devotees and so much Kirtan going on back to back, so much Harinam? I was happy, Mataji, because I was able to play, like, um, play with my friends, like soccer. Like, I was able to play soccer with my friends. And um, I was also able to like um, listen to the Kirtan in the um, temple. Very nice. Was there a lot of prashadam there too? Wow. Yes, Mataji. Okay, Ayati said she went too. Okay, Prapti and Haley, yes, please share. Um, Hare Krishna, Manti. Um, so uh, over the weekend, we also went to the Holy Name Festival and um, I helped out in the kitchen um, making uh, the kofta. Wow, that's wonderful. You got to do kitchen seva. You made koftas. Amazing. That is wonderful. Wow. Okay. And I know uh, Vede, he celebrated her 16th birthday over the weekend in association of devotees with Kirtan, with Prashad, with Harinam. Yes. Okay. And Binay, go ahead. Please share. Um, Mataji, I went to the festival of the holy name. Um, I listened to Kirtan, played soccer, and helped out in the kitchen by growing sweet potatoes. Wow, this is amazing. So many of you went to the festival. Maybe we'll join you next year. All the Tampa devotees and Jackson devotees can join you there. That'll be, that'll be great. Okay, thank you everybody for sharing. Um, yes, I'm very, very thankful. You know, this was a Thanksgiving uh, weekend. I'm very, very thankful for your association this weekend, past weekend. And actually, I try to hear your classes almost every time. Um, I'm very, very inspired by you. I'm very, very thankful for such uh, budding devotees of the Lord. Uh, you are way more advanced, way more elevated than I ever was at your age. So please uh, don't waste this uh, amazing opportunity you have. Uh, but I'm very thankful for having come in association of all of you. So intelligent, so talented, so smart, um, and so honest. Um, you're all inspiring. Thank you so much. Uh, let's say prayers very quick, and then we'll uh, start from where we left off last time. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama, Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadati Swapadantikam, Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadkam, Lam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sagara Ragunathan Vitam Satam Sajivam, Sadavetam Savadutam, Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha 
हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्तरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम गुरे गौरचंद्राया राधिकाया तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताया तद्भक्ताया नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निंदा श्री अद्वैत गाधरा श्री वसादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे री बोल थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी फॉर जॉइनिंग सो सम ऑफ द किड्स वर नॉट हियर लास्ट टाइम सो हु वुड लाइक टू समराइज द स्टोरी वी वर रीडिंग अ स्टोरी वी वर डूइंग अ स्टोरी फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम 6th कैंटो इट वाज अ स्टोरी ऑफ चित्रकेतु महाराज um does it, anyone remember that the summary of that story you don't remember beyond the we did the full story or at least two third of it so who can remind him who can do a quick summary because we'll have quiz at the end too yes isha you want to share so there was a king chitrakeetu he had everything but he wasn't happy because he just didn't have one thing which was his son and then um his his devotee friend came well wisher came and um and um told and asked if everything was okay because he knew he wanted something and then and then he said at last after like talking to him and stuff he said <coughs> he said um that i can help you and then he but he he gave some like milk or something and then and then but he said um make sure be careful even though you have something you might lose it too and then the just the king just ignore it ignored it and then um and then he gave it to his youngest queen and then the other the queen oldest. she was the oldest queen oldest queen and then um and then some queen got jealous and then they um and when the baby that bored just decided to kill it and then they killed the baby they poisoned him right okay anybody wants to fill in the gaps any any other um points they want to add thank you isha that was very nice you remember the whole story wonderful who else wants to add anything to the story yes bionto he said like when you eat the rice something bad and happen and something good will happen yeah so that was his friend right angira rishi angira rishi a great sage who had come to inquire about the well being of the king because king was really sad was really morose and depressed and the whole kingdom was getting affected so this great saint had come to inquire about his well being and uh, when chitraketu maharaj shared his heart with angira and asked him to uh, solve this problem he said you are very uh, powerful you have some mystic power some divine powers please help me get a child so angira rishi said okay i can help you but remember that this child that you will get after the sacrifice that we will perform that child can bring you both sorrow and happiness um so and this you know uh, there can be both coming uh, but king said okay whatever that's fine i've just care about having a child at this time so just help me and um angira rishi did that uh, yagya through which yagya purush came brought some sweet rice that he offered to the eldest king, uh, queen kritadyuti kritadyuti right so kritadyuti had that rice the paisam or the sweet rice and uh was able to conceive with a son and then what happened all the other queens because in those days kings used to have many queens so the other queens uh, felt very neglected because king was very joyful now he had a child but he also became very uh, so elated so happy that he started neglecting his other queens and so the other queens became very 
um, envious. Now I saw that Isha used the word jealous. Who can tell me what is the difference between envy versus jealousy? Are they the same things or is there any difference? Let's hear from somebody who has not spoken. How about Navya? Envy means you might hurt the other person and jealousy is just you want what they have. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Uh, so jealousy basically means you just feel, uh, you just want what other person has. You feel uh, jealous that, oh, why, why don't I have the same thing? I like that jewelry. Why don't I have it? I like to have um, top grades in the class. I like to be the teacher's pet. Why can't I be like that? So you just feel a little uh, jealous from the other person, but doesn't mean that you do anything about it, right? You just feel bad. But envy is the extreme form of jealousy where you will resort to a destructive behavior. Like you will uh, do something bad to the other person. You are so jealous from the other person that you may even harm them, right? You may even turn into a cruel person and harm the other person. You may, for example, uh, now it's one thing that you're jealous somebody else is scoring better than you in the class. But uh, envy means that you will do something bad so that they're not able to score good. Like you may destroy their homework or their marks or not let them come to the school that day. Like you did something bad to, um, to not let them get that uh, position, that thing that they had, right? So you want that thing so bad that uh, you will do something harmful to the other person. So in this case, the queens became so poisoned with envy that they even poisoned the child because they wanted the king's attention. They were uh, feeling envious that king is not paying any attention to them. He's only uh, loving and caring this uh, wife who gave him the child, not them. So um, we'll talk more about envy in a few. Envy is a very, very bad um, quality to have. What else? Anybody else wants to share anything from the last class? Any lessons you remember? We'll review those. I actually have some PowerPoint slides so we can review those, um, some lessons from the last class as well. Let's, let's do that actually. Okay. So this, um, topic of Chitraketu Maharaj, this is actually called ups and downs of life. This teaches us about how to handle the ups and how to handle the downs of life, right? Initially, Chitraketu Maharaj was in a very low position, was very feeling very down, right? Because he did not have a child, so he was very unhappy. Then he became very happy because he had a child, right? And now what will happen? Now the child is killed. Now what will happen? So he was down, then up. Now what will happen? Down again, right? Down again. So because now he's lost the child, his very prized possession that he got after so much struggle, after so much, um, so long, he waited so long and now finally he had a child and finally lost him again. So he will go down again. So this is how our life is, right? It comes in waves, ups and downs, ups and downs, right? And that is what Bhagavad Gita teaches us. That is what Krishna teaches us, how to tolerate those ups and downs of life. There will always be ups and downs, right? Some successes and then some failures, some good health and some bad health, some fame like you become famous and then some infamy, suddenly people don't like you. So like that, things will keep going up and down, up and down like waves. But we don't keep changing according to that right? Those are just external situations. Those are just external circumstances, right? We try to tolerate both ups, happiness, and both downs, meaning sadness or distress. We try to tolerate both of them. Did Chitriketu Maharaj tolerate those ups and downs properly like Bhagavad Gita teaches? What do you think? No, right? He did not. He became too sad when he did not have a child, became too happy and neglectful of his relationships when he did when he did have a child, right? And now what will happen? Now when he's down again, he's lost his child. Now what will happen? Let's see. So we'll go from here. Um, I just had this PowerPoint, so you may be able to jot down some thoughts uh, a little better. So these are the lessons from previous class. The first lesson was that be thankful for what you have. Count your blessings, right? We talked about 
that he had everything in his life. He had all the fame, all the strength, all the money, beautiful wives, a big kingdom. He was pious. He was uh, handsome, everything he had. So he should have counted his blessings. So what if he did not have one thing? But it is the mind's nature. Mind hankers for unfulfilled wishes. It is the mind's nature to focus on the negative things, the things that we are missing in life. Mind will just focus on that. So we have to train our mind. Bhagavad Gita teaches us, right? Krishna teaches that you can train your mind with practice, with determination, with intelligence. You can train your mind that don't hanker for unfulfilled desires. Count your blessings. Be happy, be thankful, grateful to the Lord for what he has given you and not lament, not complain about what you have not been given, right? Don't be greedy, right? He became uh, greedy that I should have it all. Accept the karma or prarabdh. Anybody familiar with this word prarabdh? You've heard the word karma, right? Karma, everybody knows. Who can tell me what is karma? Yes, Pionto. Like something happens and like it like happens back to you, I guess. Yes. Who else wants to share? Yes, Vedai. Whatever action and reaction you do and get from said action or past actions. Yes, whatever reactions you get from any actions you perform, right? It could be good actions, bad actions. If it is good action, you get good results. If it is bad actions, you get bad results. Whatever good or bad results you get from any action that you do is called karma, right? It is a reaction to your action, right? So that is karma. Now, what about the other word, prarab? Has anybody heard that word before? No? Maybe uh, the older kids, Vinita, Avni. Yeah, have you heard that word, prarabd? Or can you guess? I think you mentioned it last class, but I don't remember what it meant. Okay. Anybody wants to guess? So prarabd means destiny, right? Based on your karmas, whatever past karmas you have done in your past lives or even in this life's previous karmas, you have a certain destiny. You have a certain um, uh, results that you will get, right? So in this particular case, Chitra Ketu Maharaj was really not supposed to have that child, right? So he should have, being an elevated person, being a devotee, he should accept that karma, that prarab, and not go with artificial means to try to get that child one way or the other, right? To fulfill my desire somehow, one way or the other. No. So we should accept our karma or prarab. Listen to the advice of your well-wisher. This was another lesson we learned, right? Angira Rishi uh, told him that this child can bring you sorrow. So he should have inquired about it. What do you mean? What kind of sorrow? Will it be very dangerous? Will it be very harmful uh, for the kingdom? So listen to the advice of your well-wishers. Mind focuses on negative. This we talked about. So this is some of the lessons we had. Then the, this is the other lesson I wanted to um, mention. So you saw that Chitra Ketu Maharaj finally lost the child again. So he's now again miserable, including him now all now. Uh, the queen is also miserable and the other queens are also lamenting, right? Everybody is now miserable. The other queens are lamenting because they have done such a sinful act, right? And the queen Kritadyuti is lamenting because she had this child and she became a favorite of the king and she this child she adored and the king adored and they have lost him now. So the, again, the whole kingdom is plunged into a miserable situation. So this is how this world is. It is full of dangers at every step. And it is full of miseries, right? And every step there are problems. And we are all we are doing is it's like um, um, obstacle course, right? You're just trying to navigate those obstacles in life. And that is what Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us how to navigate those obstacles in life. This, uh, this line, this world is full of miseries. Remind anybody of anything from Bhagavad Gita? Isha knows. Okay, let's see who else knows. I want to hear from some other kids who have not spoken yet. What about Om, Radesh, Karina, Biraj? Anybody wants to share? Karina, were you raising your hand? No? Okay. Okay. Beyond to again. Go ahead. 
Um, Druva's story when like Druva said, um, like when um Suruchi like told him to not um what do you call it like he can't go on his mother's lap. Okay. The queen, I mean the king. Okay. Yes, Vinita. Uh, hey Krishna, it reminds me of eight point fifteen from the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. uh, Mamupetia Punajan Ma Dukalya Mashashwatam Napnuvanti Mahatmana Samse Dim Paramgata. Hari bowl. Can we say three times Hari bowl for Vinita? Hari bowl. Hari bowl. Hari bowl. Hari bowl. So this is the verse Vinita quoted. Mamupetya punarjan ma dukkalyam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsiddhim par mamgata. Vinita, you want to read the translation? Okay. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So this word, this phrase, dukkalyam ashashvatam, is a very famous phrase because dukh means miseries, right? Everybody knows dukh is a Hindi word that means miseries, right? Alem means house, house, like um, uh, like pustakalya is a house of books. That is like a library basically, right? Or granthalya, house of books or library. Vidyalya, where there is house of education or house of vidya, that's school. Vidyalya is a school. So like that, this word Krishna says is Dukhalyam, meaning house of miseries. And it is a Shashwatam, this house of miseries, which is temporary. So this verse is 8.15. Does is this not included in 50 verses? Is this not part of 50 verses? Okay. Would you like to um, uh, learn this, memorize this verse for next time? Yeah. And you know, next Saturday is actually Bhagavad Gita Jayanti. Does everyone know what Bhagavad Gita Jayanti means? No? Who can? Who knows? Avni, go ahead. What do you know? Uh, Bhagavad Gita Jainti was um, the day when Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to Arjun. Yes. So Bhagavad Gita Jainti is the day Bhagavad Gita was spoken, right? And this day is also Ekadashi, next Saturday. So when you are observing the fast of Ekadashi, in however you observe, Please try to memorize, you remember your 50 verses or 75 verses or whatever number of verses you have memorized before, try to recap them again, okay? Try to revise them and you can offer, you can say them in front of the Lord. Just go sit in, in your temple and just uh, uh, say them, offer them as an offering. So this is the day 5,000 years back when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. So uh, let's memorize this verse for next time then. This is 8.15, uh, okay? Dukhalema Shashwatam is a very famous phrase uh, which actually tells you the true nature of this material world, okay? Now we'll go back. So this is another lesson we learned from the story uh, that, uh, from Chitraketu Maharaj's life that how you keep having this uh, waves of happiness and miseries, okay? Then what else did we learn? We learned about this uh, point also last time that don't be too happy or too sad, just tolerate, right? He, when he was happy, he was too happy so that he neglected everything, all his relationships. When he was sad, he was so sad that he neglected his kingdom. He became very uh, morose and just ignored uh, the duties of his kingdom, the state business and state affairs, he ignored them, right? We should not be like that, just tolerate, right? Just tolerate. And then another point we learned was your happiness or sorrow affects other people also, right? And this is the verse that goes with it from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this is, who can tell the number of this verse? Yes, Isha. 2.14. 2.14, amazing. Yes, all these verses, they are in sequence in second chapter, 2.13, 14, 15. They're all very, very important. Uh, 2.12 also. Uh, 10, 11 also actually. But yes, uh, this 2.14, very, very important. How to deal with the happiness and distresses of life. It says that happiness and distress is like the sub summer and the winter seasons. They keep coming, right? You just tolerate them. What can you do? Right now it's so it's so chilly. It's so cold. What can you do? Just wear extra layers of sweaters and uh, just wait for to bide your time. You wait uh, for the time to pass, right? 
uh, you just make the best of it. You still go to school, you still do your duties, you still do your hobbies, right? It's not like you stop going to school because it is uh, so hot or so cold. No, we still do all our duties as usual. We still eat, right? So same thing in happiness or distress. When they come in life, we still do our um, prescribed duties as usual. Um, and I will talk later about how a devotee manages um, distress in life. Then we talked about how to manage our relationships, right? Um, so there are two main instances in this story where we saw how the relationships were getting affected. One, when Angira Rishi came and he sensed the um, sorrowfulness in Chitraketu Maharaj, right? He sensed that my friend is not happy. My, something is bothering him and he's not sharing with me, right? So first, Angira Rishi very tactfully asked about the well-being of everybody else around the king. Are your wives happy? Are your soldiers um, fighting well in the war? Are your administrators, ministers listening to you? Is your kingdom good? Uh, do you have enough money? Like he asked about various other things. Then he asked about him. He kind of had him open up to him, right? So this teaches us to understand other people's mood and emotions and to try to connect and share with your friends, right? We should not ignore when we see that our friend is not Feel, not feeling, not looking good today. They are, there is something uh, on their mind and they're not sharing with them. Then we should try to connect with them, share our own um, uh, emotions and feelings with them and have them also share with you, right? This is a way to establish good relationship, good friendships uh, with other people. And when they're in difficult times, you empathize with them, right? You don't just leave them alone. Okay, I'm not going to call them. Oh, I'm not going to visit them. I'm not going to ask them. They can manage. No, you empathize with them. You ask about their well-being. You offer love, care, support, right? And then another point we learned was when uh, Chitraketu Maharaj neglected his queens so that they became so envious, uh, and, you know, that they became completely overwhelmed by that envy, right? We should not, so we learned that we should not bring out bad emotions in the people. We should help other people grow, bring out the best in them. Don't neglect them. And we should cherish our friends and relationships, right? So we should not think, oh, my relationships are temporary. They're only for this life, only with this body. So what is the, what is the point? No, they have been given to us by the Lord. We should cherish our friends and relationships and relatives and everybody. We should take care of them. Um, then comes, then we came to the point where queens were so consumed by the envy that they poisoned the child, right? Because they became so vengeful, so um, destructive. They wanted to do something really cruel, something really harmful uh, that will affect both the queen and the king. So uh, that teaches us that envy is a very, very negative emotion, very, very bad emotion. And is very, it is... Um, something that devotees, you know, one thing that devotees really need to be very uh, mindful of, not to develop envy against anybody because it leads to hard heartedness, right? And devotees are very gentle people. So there is no scope of becoming hard hearted. Uh, and this can lead to cruelty and violence like we just saw. It leads to loss of compassion. And what can de devotees happen? What can happen to devotees? Let's say we are you know that we are all devotees here, right? We're trying to please the Lord. But sometimes we can also be affected by envy. Envy. Now, we are probably not going to become violent or really harmful to others. But what can envy lead us to do? Can anybody think of anything? How can envy affect us? Let's say I'm envious of other devotee uh, because of some quality they have and some talent they have that I don't have. How can that affect me? Let's hear from, how come not everybody's sharing today? Yes, Avni, please share. Um, it can lead us to fall down from where we are. Yes, that's true, yes. How can, and how will it lead, to, lead us to fall down? So falling down means uh, that we will not be able to do our devotional practices, our uh, spiritual practices very well, right? Uh, they will yeah, be affected. Yeah. Our sadhana will be affected. We'll lose interest in devotional activities, right? That is falling down. So how does that happen? How does envy lead to that? 
very important thing that we have to guard again. Yes, uh, let's, okay, Navya, go ahead. You might um, do something so that the other person can't do whatever their talent is or have whatever they have. And okay. this. Yeah, you're envious of that. Yes, Biraj, please share. Um, Mataji, we should be uh, careful of pride because when we're envious, when someone's envious, they're like envious of Lord Krishna's supremacy and other devotees' uh, status, and then they'll try to bring other devotees down just to make themselves better. Yes, Hari Bol, amazing. So yes, that is what envy will do. And we will lead us to blaspheme other devotees. And we will lead us to fault finding, criticize, right? Because we are so envious of other people that how would we harm them? We, we don't, you know, typically we, we don't harm them with our body or words, right? We, we're not going to say anything. Um, we're not going to physically harm them like these queens did physical harm. But we may harm them with our words and mind, right? Like we may say something bad about them by criticizing them, by fault finding. Or mentally, we may uh, start finding their faults and start criticizing them within our head, right? So in this way, fault finding, criticizing, uh, blaspheming the devotees can start from enviousness. And that is a very, very bad quality that can lead to uh, fall down, right? That uh, uh, you mentioned, one of you mentioned, that can lead to fall down. So this fault find, this leads to offenses. Vaishnava aprad will happen, right? Aprad will happen. Offenses will happen against other people. So we should not have this enviousness because it is a very destructive quality to have. Nobody appreciates it and it is not dear to Krishna at all. Okay, it leads to sinful propensities. So this is what that envy did to the queens. Uh, okay, we'll talk about this later. So now what happened? Now the queen, so let's move forward with the story. So now the queens, were consumed with the envy, they have poisoned the child. Now again, down came in the life of Chitraketu Maharaj. He and his queen, Kritadyuti, started, uh, they became very depressed, they are crying, very sorrowful. The whole kingdom is again plunged into this darkness, this mood spread over everybody because they lost their prince uh, who they had gotten after such a, a you know, long time and with so much effort and whatnot. So everyone was heartbroken, right? And now when they, when this happened, the queen actually, Kritadyuti, now she was not, it's not mentioned that she's a devotee of the Lord. Chitriketu Maharaj was a devotee. She's not mentioned as a devotee. So what did she start doing? She began complaining about the Lord. She began to lament about the Lord. We, did we talk about the meaning of word lament? What does lament mean? Yeah, okay. So when you are very, very sorrowful, you express that misery by lamenting, by saying things, right? But she started complaining about the Lord, that how this is uh, his fault, how it is Supreme Lord's fault, right? And this is what some people do. When they are happy, they will conveniently forget the Lord, right? When you are very happy, you have everything going on for you, then you don't even remember him. You don't chant his names. You don't read any scriptures or his words. You just conveniently forget him. Right, just because all your desires are fulfilled right now. But when something miserable happens, distress comes, then people start blaming the Lord that it's because of him. What have we ever done in life? Why, why did he do this to us? You guys are uh, very young to have seen this, but I've seen this where people blame the Lord. So this is material consciousness. This is not how a devotee uh, deals with distress. They don't complain about the Lord when they're in distressful situation. Okay. So this is um, what she started doing. Okay. Uh, now tell me, before I go to that slide, how do you think the devotee will respond uh, in, in this difficulty? In such a miserable situation, you're, um, you've lost something so big. Yes, Biraj. Uh, Hare Krishna Mahatati, I think the devotee will um, have faith in Lord Krishna and uh, believe that whatever Lord Krishna, whatever happened, Lord Krishna has planned and is for the best and is according to his plan. And he will be like peaceful and he, he will not, the devotee will not lament and he will accept what has happened as um, part of Lord Krishna's supreme plan. 
Very bold. Wow, you guys are very, very elevated. So yes, one point you mentioned was um, that he will see Krishna's hand in this. He will see this as a Krishna's arrangement that Krishna knows best for me. He's my well-wisher. So some way or the other, this may be good. This situation may be good for me, right? Maybe I needed to have this happen to me for some, the, uh, some good for my future that I can't see right now because I'm not, I can't see the future, but Krishna can see the future. So somehow this is helpful for me. Uh, like take the example of a parent, you know, if somebody like one of you, for example, you, let's say you have bad teeth. I don't know who has bad teeth here, but let's say somebody has a cavity in their teeth, right? And you like to eat a lot of chocolates, but your parent will say, no, today you cannot eat any chocolates hmm? because you, now he knows, the parent knows that if I let him eat the chocolate tomorrow, it will start hurting so bad that it will need to be pulled out and this will lead to more pain and suffering, right? So he did not let you eat the chocolate. Now you have, you have two choices. One choice is you can uh, complain about the parent. Oh, my parent, he's so, my, my dad, he's so, um, he's so cruel. He would not let me eat the chocolate. You know, why does he get to decide what I can eat or not eat? Uh, who gave him the authority? All this, you start complaining about him and you just start blaspheming him. That is one choice. The other choice is to accept that, you know, Dad is my well-wisher. He's my best friend. He knows what is good for me. In some way, this must be good for me, right? And we know that it is good for you because if you can tolerate this not eating chocolate today, tomorrow you will not be in pain and your tooth will not need to be pulled out, which is much more painful, right? Than not eating the chocolate. So in uh, he's looking at your long-term benefit, not just your short-term desires, right? Similarly, so... Devotee will understand that Krishna is my well-wisher, my friend. He's looking at my long-term benefit and this is somehow helpful for me. So, okay, that's one way. What else? Yes, Bionto. I just wanted to say, thing you just said now, I think I remember Prabhuji saying that like a long like time ago about like that same thing. How like Krishna is your best friend and should always like do the thing. Yes, yes. Krishna is our, he's everybody's well-wisher. Even the demons and other people that he kills, he's their well-wisher too. He's just uh, sometimes punishes his uh, naughty children, right? Just like a parent punishes naughty children. But okay, so one is we accept that this is Krishna's arrangement. What else? What else the devotee will do? He will tolerate this situation, right? You said. Who else wants to share? Okay, I see only Bionto's hand. Okay, Bionto, go ahead. He could like meditate, like so when he meditates for Krishna to help him on the thing. Yes, amazing. Oh my god, you are wonderful, all of you. Can we say three times Hari Bol for Bionto? Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Yes, so the devotee will take the shelter of the Lord in that situation, right? Instead of turning away, away from him, he will become more dependent on the Lord. So he will pray more intensely, more sincerely. So he will take that sorrowful situation as an opportunity to pray to the Lord even more sincerely. His chanting will improve. He will do more devotional services, right? Like that, he will um, he conduct his life. Eh? He, he will not turn away from the Lord. He will turn more towards him. Okay, very nice. What else? What about that karma we talked about? Will he think this is this could be my karma, right? I'm just getting the results of my karma. And he will even think, a devotee will even think that this is just the results of my previous deeds, my previous sinful reactions that I'm getting. But Krishna has actually minimized them because Devotee always thinks that I don't deserve what I'm getting. So maybe I, I deserved even more suffering and Krishna by his mercy has minimized them so that I'm only getting this much. Hmm? He will think that my, by my previous sinful reactions, I should have gotten more suffering, but actually Krishna has minimized it, right? So that is how he will. And um, let's see what else. Yeah, I think you mentioned all of the points. So basically a devotee, um, the, you know, we always say Hari Bol, Hari Bol, right? Hari Bol, meaning chant the name of the Lord. Devotee always says Hari Bol in every situation. He says Hari Bol when he's happy. He says Hari Bol when he's distressed, right? Hari Bol is not only for happy situations. Hari Bol is also for 
problematic situation you have you should chant the names of the lord in both situations don't turn away from the lord will the devotee stop doing his services or his um, prescribed duties at the time of sorrow or in the time of extreme happiness no right so uh, a devotee will understand that the service to the lord is the topmost priority so this happiness and distress that i'm facing right now i will tolerate it and continue doing my service to the lord so his focus is not disturbed right he does not uh, stop uh, serving the lord right for example take an example you you have to go to school every day now let's say uh, one of your toys breaks in the morning okay but just before leaving for school your toy breaks ha huh? will you still go to the school or not who will not go to school that day everybody will go to the school right because you understand that this toy you know i can fix later or i can uh, um, or my parents will get me another one or it's okay i have done playing with it that's fine right because you know going to the school is more important so this temporary situation this uh, will not let you get so overwhelmed that you stop uh, focusing on the uh, service to the lord stop focusing on the big picture on your prescribed duties right but is that what chitraketu maharaj did no he turned away he and he and also the queen started well he turned away from his kingdom stopped taking care of the kingdom and the queen basically started blaming the lord right so this is not how devotee deals with the distress now i'll share show you a verse from shrimad bhagavatam how devotee tolerates distress this is a very important verse <clears throat> this comes in 10th canto uh let me recite it ट्रांसलेशन My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering your respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So this verse clearly says, right, that in the um. when he is in misery what does the devotee do he patiently suffers the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart word and body so even that time he is offering obeisances that person waits for your causeless mercy upon uh, upon him and that person is eligible for liberation okay so such person has become eligible for liberation because he has tolerated the distress okay now what happened now let's move on with the story so chitraketu maharaj and queen are both sad kingdom is sad now angira rishi came again okay and this time angira rishi brought with him who is this who is this narada narada yes he brought the transcendental space traveler right narad muni so this time angira muni brought narad rishi with him uh, before he came alone but this time he thought okay i need to do something more the king really needs to wake up king really needs to be waken up and enlightened uh, so that he can see how things are happening he right now he is completely become blinded by his sorrow so he brought bigger guns right you need big uh, ammunition sometimes so he brought narad muni with him now look at the king who is lamenting and the two rishis what did they do so they did the same thing that um well before uh, before they, uh, let me tell you something interesting they did so they were lamenting now these two rishis came so naraguni said naraguni saw that king is so devastated by loss of his child that he has no composure his mind is completely overwhelmed he there he's not composed enough for me to talk to him right um so before i can start giving him any enlightenment any knowledge i need to really shake him i need to really jolt him uh, from this misery hmm? 
so he said um, he said okay king let's do this for you how about i bring your child back hmm? so with his divine powers narad muni has you know narad muni has a lot of mystical and divine power uh, that is how he's traveling he's uh, dev rishi he travels between different um, planets and everywhere right so what did he do he called upon the soul of the child of the lost child hmm? and he asked the soul when the soul, soul of the child came he asked the soul uh, please enter back into this body and accept your royal position again become the prince and let your parents love on you huh? like they were doing before why did you leave just stay in this body and exchange loving relationship with them don't leave they are very sorrowful without you get back into the body now do you want to know what child said the soul said okay let me show you what the soul said and let's see please who would like to read yes avni okay let's see what the child said so this is the child it's the soul that narad muni brought back and what does he say so this is what the soul said go ahead avni they rishi they are my parents of which life a soul does not have any parents brothers or friends many a times i was their father and many times they were mine many a times they were my friends and even enemies all these relations are be- because of your mortal body and as you leave your mortal remains behind you also leave behind your relations and and then everyone is all by himself and to suffer as per his karma very bold what did you understand from this of new would you like to share what did what did child say basically give a gist of what did he say he was saying that the soul doesn't know which parents of which life because he's had so many lives and so many different parents and it doesn't really like matter right yeah he said devrishi narad you're saying these are my parents which life i have had so many lives millions of lives i've been child have they or they or i've been their parent or their spouse or something you know some different relationships i don't know which life you're talking about why should i get back into this body so child basically rejected this offer of going back into the body to become the royal prince again he said devrishi i don't know what these he so he basically gave the knowledge that krishna gave right in bhagavad gita about the soul right how these relationships are temporary and they just come together for the duration of the mortal body and once one leaves that body you get different relationships in a different body right so he is basically say, rejecting this offer of devrishi now what did that do to chitraketu maharaj when he heard this when, what do you think happened yes bionto he became 10 times more sorrow <laughs> okay okay let's see who else on Yes, Isha. He became even more sorrow. Okay. Yes, Navya. He became fully enlightened. Okay. What else? Who else? Okay. Yeah. So actually, his eyes opened up. He realized that this child is speaking the truth. he does not want that relationship back with me why am i lamenting i have given up all my duties my relationships i have forgotten everything uh, everything that was given to me i have so many things so many uh, resources so many facilities that have been given to me by lord and this child is is correct that the relationship was only for the duration of that body so why am i lamenting after him he became suddenly uh, his eyes opened up he became composed again and now when he became composed again narad muni uh, was able to give him the knowledge that he had come to given him he just needed to give him this jolt right so now he was able to give him the knowledge and he gave him the same knowledge that krishna gave to arjun in bhagavad gita the knowledge of the true self right the knowledge of the soul that who are we are we this body or are we the soul who says we are the body no right we are the soul so krishna gave this knowledge and um, narad muni again gave this knowledge to chitraketu maharaj so um, let's go forward 
So what did Narad Muni say? He talked about how uh, we change the bodies, right? How we accept the body. And then uh, during the duration of that body, we go through the birth, death, disease, old age, right? How we make so many relationships in that body. And those relationships are just temporary, right? But we, um, hold on. so yeah. So this is the verse 2.13, right? They know us many You all remember this? I have some verses from Bhagavad Gita to remind you that the knowledge given by the great sages, they're, they're speaking the same uh, transcendental knowledge that Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita. They are his messengers only. So Narad Muni also being a pure devotee, uh, a messenger of the Lord, he's also speaking the same knowledge to Chitraketu Maharaj. Uh, so he spoke this about Dehi no Asmanyatha Dehi, right? Then he spoke about how um, this beautiful verse is 22 and 23 from second chapter. Uh, that as a person puts on new garments, giving up the old ones, the soul also accepts the new bodies, giving up the old and useless one. Just like we change our clothings. If our clothing becomes old, we don't start uh, lamenting and crying. Yes, we feel upset about it. But then after a certain time, you get rid of that and get a new um, pair of clothes, right? Uh, then he says the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon, right? It cannot be burned. It cannot be moisture, not withered by the wind. So... There is no harm that comes to the soul. Everybody remembers this knowledge from Bhagavad Gita, right? How we are the how our true self is basically the soul, which is not harmed, which is eternal, which just accepts the body like a pair of garments or clothes, right? Everybody remembers this. Thumbs up if you do. Yes. So this is the knowledge Narad Muni again gave to uh, Chitriketu Maharaj, and then. So this is, again, we go through various species, right? Not only we go through various uh, bodies, but the bodies could be of different species. It could be plant species, animal species, based on our karma, we can go through different species of life. Um, and then whoever takes a body will definitely leave that body and die, right? And then accept another body and take birth again. One who has taken this birth is sure to die. And after death, one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. So this is the instruction of Krishna, right? That this is the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. So this knowledge, uh, King Chitraketu received. Now, let me ask you, we know that the relationships are temporary. We know that this uh, relationships last only for the duration of this body. We have parents, we have friends, we have uh, spouses, we have um, grandparents, teachers, so many beautiful relationships that we make, right? That we, some that are God given and some that we make in this life. So before we talked about how we should be in these relationships, right? We should be empathetic, we should cherish them, we should establish connections, uh, connect with their heart, right? So why is it if these relationships are temporary, um, what does it matter? I can be cruel to the people. I can. I don't have to take care of them. What do you think? Does temporary mean that we should not take care of them? We should just um, enjoy our life. We should just. Uh, we should not worry if something bad is happening to somebody else. It's not happening to me. I want to hear from somebody else. Bianto, I know you've answered many, many questions now. So let's see. How about Radhesh and Om, Prapti, Heli, Prakriti? They're not, you're not speaking and your videos are not turned on. Okay, let's hear from Binayak then. Um, even if it's temporary, the karma, the, the bad, bad karma will come back to you. Since you're treating them bad, you'll get you'll have bad karma coming to you yeah yeah karma you will get bad karma for treating people badly but is that the reason why we treat people nice because we are worried about the sinful reaction yes navya because we would we will get the sinful reaction and also um the other person also has feelings, so they'd feel it too. Okay. And yes. you would like someone doing that to you. Yes, okay. Yes, Vedahi. Um, I mean, like, treating others the right, like, kindly, isn't that just the right thing to do? 
Yeah, it is the right thing to do. So basically, everything that we have, whether it's relationships, this body, right, has been given to us by Lord. Now, somebody can say this body is temporary, so I can misuse it. I can um, put bad things in my body. I can eat. Um, I can drink whatever bad things people drink and smoke, right? That is destructive for the body, but it is uh, pleasureful. Some people can have pleasure in with doing those things. So what is the point? Why not? Why don't I do all those things if this body is temporary anyways? You said the body will go through birth, death, disease, old age. So why can't I smoke or something destructive like that? Why? Because this body is given to you. Everything is given to you uh, by Krishna to be used in service of Krishna, right? Everything that we have, whether it is our relationships, this body, our uh, intelligence, our talents, our skills, a job, a country, a house, everything is given by Krishna, right? Everything is given by Krishna, just lent to us. It is lent to us for that duration. And we have to use it wisely. We have to take care of it. Like we take care of our body, right? We, that is why we exercise, we eat right, we don't put any bad substances in our body. Uh, we treat it like temple of the Lord, right? Our house also, we know that it is temporary. Maybe we'll live, it, live in this house only for five years or one year. Or somebody can say there can be tornado tomorrow and it can destroy your house. So don't, why do you take care of it? But no, it is given to me by Krishna. Um, so I have to treat it like a temple, right? I and, uh, engage devotees here. I hear Harikatha here. I do deity worship here. I have my Radha Gopi Janvallab here. So I cannot mistreat my house. I have to keep it clean, right? Similarly, our relationships are also given by Krishna. So we cannot just mistreat them. We don't just treat them nice because we are worried about bad reaction, but because that will please the Lord. They are, they are other humans, other living entities that are under our care, that are coming in our, associ our association so we can take care of them. So we have to take care of them. It will not only be pleasing to the Lord, like where they said it is the right thing to do, because they are all part and parcels of the Lord. They're all part and parcels of the Lord. So remembering that they're also part and parcels of the Lord, uh, we have to treat them nicely. We have to treat them like Lord's children, right? That is why we don't harm any other living entities. We don't harm our body. We don't harm our house. We treat our country nicely. We treat our community nicely. We cherish everything that has been given to Krishna. Not only it is pleasing to Krishna, uh, but also uh, it is good for your karma. And, you know, um, this is um, um, the right thing to do. Maybe I love your phrase. So, yes. Uh, so we cherish our relationships, even though they are temporary. So this is, um, this is the knowledge that um, Narad Muni gave about knowledge of the self to Chitraketu Maharaj. Okay. So then what happened? Now... Chitraketu Maharaj got completely enlightened by Narad Muni, right? So he asked Narad Muni that my eyes are completely open. I want to accept you as my spiritual master. I want to um, follow your instructions. Please accept me as your disciple. So he surrendered to Narad Muni and, and asked him to accept him as a guru. So Narad Muni gave him a mantra. Narad Muni said, chant this mantra very, very intensely, sincerely, meditating on the Lord, chant this mantra. And that is what Chitriketu Maharaj did. He started, he received instructions from Narad Muni and he started chanting that mantra very intensely, sincerely for seven days. And after seven days, he had darshan of Lord Sankarshan. Lord Sankarshan is one of the forms of uh, Krishna, one of the expansions of Krishna. So he had uh, darshan of Lord Sankarshan after chanting that mantra sincerely uh, for seven days. And uh, Lord Sankarshan then started talking to Chitraketu and he further enlightened him. If you look in sixth canto of Bhagavatam, then he received more knowledge, transcendental knowledge and instructions from Sankarshan, Lord Sankarshan. And in this way, he also gave him a planet. He said, you will get this Vidya Dhara planet and you can rule on that planet. So, uh, but you have to devote your life completely in my service. So, um, Chitriketu Maharaj became a very pure, advanced devotees of the Lord, never again forgot his services, his prescribed duties, his um, uh, param dharma to, uh, you know, um, 
keep Lord in the center, right? Before he was not keeping Lord in the center, right? Before he was keeping himself, his desires, his happiness and distress in the center. Now he did. Now he was able to keep Lord in the center and attain the perfection of life. So this was the um, story of Chitraketu Maharaj talking about ups and downs of the life. Any questions, uh, realizations? Anybody wants to share? I'm going to mute myself and I want to hear from everybody. Please go ahead. Nobody sharing? Any realizations come to mind? Lessons uh, from this half of the story today? So one of the lessons I can think of is how to take shelter or how to um, deal with a distressful situation, right? When one is in sorrowful situation, reversals, right? Reversals should increase our dependence on the Lord. Not our rebellious nature, but increase our dependence on the Lord, right? That is one lesson I learned. Um, what else? Envy? Yes, Vedahi. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, like, try to avoid envious thoughts to others. Yes, perfect. Prapti and Haley, yes. Please share. Um, um, I was going to say, like, um, I learned that you can, like, you can, like, you still have to cherish, like, your relationships with other, with other people, even though they're all going to be temporary. Yes. Okay. Let me write down all the, uh, and I'll share this, um, on the group temporary B still cherish them, right? And we already discussed reasons why we do that. And what did uh, Vedahi share? Envy, about envy. Envy is destructive, right? It leads to offensive mentality. It leads to sinful propensities. Envy is destructive, I like that. And um, somebody, uh, or how to deal with distress, right? Devotees deal with distress by taking, by depending on the Lord even more. Right. What else? Uh, we learned about knowledge of the self, right? We, you, I think you already know this from Bhagavad Gita, but knowledge of the self, right? Knowledge of the absolute truth. That is what Chitraketu Maharaj learned from Narad Muni. Um, any other points come to mind? Oh, the world is a place of misery, right? That is the words that you have to memorize. The world is Dukhalem Ashashwatam, right? Place of miseries. There will always be ups and downs. The happiness is temporary, but the distress is also temporary in this world, right? So don't let that affect you. Do your prescribed duties. Okay. Unless anybody can think of any other lessons. Yes, Isha. Mother Jay thought it was the yes. world, the place, a world place of misery equals um danger uh, a place full of danger yes place of dangers there is actually a very beautiful verse in bhagavatam about that how it is a place of dangers it is place of dangers i will write that there are two different verses but we'll focus on bhagavad gita verse um and we'll maybe another time talk about the verse that talks about full of dangers it is a very melodious verse Okay, so uh, do you think we can do Kahoot or do you want to skip today and do it next time? Let's see, if you want to it comes up. If you want to skip, then we can skip. Okay, Isha, give me a quick thumbs up so we don't delay anymore. I'm not getting many thumbs up. So some people are saying skip. Okay, so we'll do it next time. Is that okay? We'll do it next time. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, uh, next time I'm thinking Prabhuji will be able to take your class so you can do a Kahoot that time uh, from both these, uh, from this whole story. And whoever has not had time to listen, please listen to last two classes, for this class and the last class. And it'll be very easy if you listen. You'll all be vying for the top spot. Okay, we'll stop for today. Any other 
questions, realizations? Can we start? Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Please, uh, Vedi, please share the homework. We just remember that verse and um, try to revise your Bhagavad Gita verses, uh, offer them on Gita Jayanti if possible, um, and prepare for Kahoot for next time. Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you. Mancha Galta Rubyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhe Eva Chapatita Nam Pavani Bhyo Veshna Bhyo Namunama. Gurvega Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalai Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namunama. Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Have a great week.